It's a network player, a network bridge and a own endpoint that has a built-in DAC but also offers I2S, AES-EBU and SPDIF digital outputs. The price? 999 euros. Silent Angel became known over here through their audiophile network switch. See my review, links at the usual places. Nowadays they offer music servers, linear power supplies and network players. The Munich M2 reviewed here is a network player with built in DAC and headphone amp. For 300 euro less there also is a digital out only version called the Munich Transport M2T. The Munich M2 is to be connected to the analog inputs like CD or AUX on an amplifier that is connected to a pair of loudspeakers. Or if you prefer you can connect a pair of headphones directly to the front. On the other side it needs to be connected over a network cable to your router for internet access, to your smartphone or tablet for remote control and if your music is stored on a share on your computer or NAS to that too. To improve the quality further you can connect a DAC in between the Munich M2 and the amplifier. And to make it even sound better the Silent Angel Forester F1 power supply can replace the supplied switch mode power brick. The tiny metal housing is black and has a curved front. It measures only 155 by 110 by 55 mm and weighs almost a kilo. On the front there are four tiny LEDs that indicate mute, power, DSD playback and PCM playback. On the right there is a 6.3 mm headphone socket. When we look at the back we see the power switch, the network connector, two USB 3 connectors, two USB 2 connectors, the analog outputs, two accessory connectors with unclear function, the SPDIF output, the I2S output and the AS-EBU output. One of the USB 2 connectors is designated as USB audio output, which puzzles me since it's obviously one of the Raspberry Pi 4B's USB outputs. Perhaps they modified the Pi slightly? The cabinet is literally packed with electronics. I removed the top board which is there to hold the M-Link connectors in place. When removed we find on the right side a large cooling block that covers the entire Raspberry Pi 4B. I didn't feel comfortable to dig deeper so that's that. Since there are no controls on the Munich it's rather simple to use. Hook up the supplied power brick and connect the analog outputs to your amp. Then it's down to choosing how to control the Munich. The free option is to download Silent Angel's FitOS Orbiter app for smartphone or tablet. It supports Amazon Music HD, Tidal, Cobus, Internet Radio, Spotify Connect and Airplay 2. Furthermore the Munich can function as a Rune endpoint and as a DNLA renderer. And you can browse a USB drive or music shares on your computer or NAS and play from there. The app works fine for music on streaming services but the internet radio function is limited. Not too many radio stations are listed and they are poorly categorized. There is a group of stations called International next to genres like alternative classic. In International you find groups like African, Bollywood, Celtic and European but also German and French where I would have expected that to be in European. There is no Dutch or local group nor is there a search function and I was not able to find any popular Dutch radio station. If you want to use DNLA you need a separate DNLA controller like Glider on iPhone or better use an app like Audivana or J River Media Center on a computer, have that send music to the Munich and control it with the Audivana or J River app on your smartphone or tablet. Or use Rune on a computer and control it using the Rune app. That solves the internet radio station problem too. To operate the Munich you download FitOS on your tablet or smartphone. 
I used my iPad Pro for I like the large screen of a tablet. When you start up the app it searches for Munich streamers and when found you can select it. The next screen lets you select a source and settings. Let's select Tidal, search for Fink and look for the fantastic live album Reels Turn Beneath My Feet. Then you are just a tap away from the great track Perfect Darkness. Tap along the bottom of the screen to see the Now Playing screen. I presume this works the same for all other streaming services. I only have subscriptions for Tidal and Cobus. As said, the internet radio function isn't great. These are the German stations and here the French ones. Clearly room for improvement. Browsing your music on your computer or NAS can take some time if you own quite some music. As said, a far better way is to play music from your NAS or PC and use programs like Audivana, JBriver Media Center or other DNLA compatible programs. I'll show you Audivana. Here you can simply select the M1 to play music bit perfect over the Munich. Or use Rune, which is my favorite but also the costly solution. Again, here you can select the M1 that I renamed in Rune as Silent Angel M1. Switching to room or DNA is automatic. I started testing the Munich in my reference setup 2 where the Marantz KR Pearl light drives the acoustic energy radiance 1 loudspeakers. They are supported by the RHEL T5 subwoofer that is connected to the loudspeaker terminals on the Marantz. The Munich is connected to the AccuSwitch audiophile switch over a CAT6 patch cable and to the amp over the no longer available Siltec London RCAs. Music comes from Tidal and Cobus using the VitOS app on an iPad Pro or from Room Server that runs on the Grim Audio Mu1 downstairs. In that case only the Intel NUC part of the Grim Audio is used. The iPad Pro again is used as a Room remote control. The Munich sounds surprisingly pleasant given the price of 999 euros including VAT. There is a wide and reasonable deep stereo image with for its class good resolution. More importantly Artiflex are at a for this price remarkable low level. Especially sibilance is very well controlled. This all adds up to a friendly and musically sounding streamer that I rank close to the top of my setup too. Time to upgrade the power supply. In order to offer an upgrade path, Silent Angel introduces the Forrester F1 linear power supply that comes at 469 euros including VAT. It has the same dimensions as the Munich so you can place them next to each other or on top of each other. It outputs 2 times 5 volts DC 2 amps to power the Munich and, for instance, the Bonn N8 audiophile network switch that is of the same width and depth so it can be stacked too. As can be seen on this picture where optional anti-resonance damping feet are mounted. The front of the Forester has 4 LEDs that indicate overheating for output 1, the status for output 1, the status for output 2 and overheating for output 2. On the rear the IEC mains input, the fuse holder, the power switch, the two outputs on 5.5 by 2.1 mm DC plugs and in between them the same DC outputs on USB connectors. By the way there also is a Forrester 2 that has two 12V DC outputs, one output capable of delivering 3 amps, the other 1 amp. The Forrester power supply adds resolution to the Munich and a somewhat deeper stereo image. Lows are delivered with more power. Optionally four different types of DC cables are offered. The first has copper poles, the second copper on the positive pole and silver on the negative, the third has silver on the positive pole and copper on the negative and the fourth has silver on both poles. Prices range from 69 to 139 euros for the 20 cm version. Longer versions are also available. It might sound absurd but they all influence the sound. I like the white one the best 
which of course is the 139 all silver version. It opens up the sound further, improving resolution the most. Although silver is often associated with sharpness, this isn't the case here, meaning proper quality silver. The quality of the analog outputs often gives a good indication on how good the digital outputs are. For if the internal digital to analog converter is plagued by jitter, so will be the digital outputs. You might choose the I2S output for the web has taught you that is the best. But the clock that feeds the word clock line of the I2S output is the same that feeds the internal DAC and if that is jittery, the I2S output will be jittery. As will be the AES EBU and SPDIF outputs. If there is a clock present that is low on jitter and if both sending and the receiving digital interfaces are well designed, there will be no difference in sound quality. I don't own a DAC that has an I2S input, but I have reviewed several and had the opportunity to compare that most extensively. But I digress. Given the results using the analog out, I wanted to test the digital outputs in my reference setup 1B that is placed in the living room on the ground floor. Here the AX520 amplifier drives the Audiophysic Scorpio loudspeakers. The Mitek Brooklyn MQA enabled DAC powered by the Ferrum Hipsus power supply is on duty here. It is connected to the Munich and Forrester combination over a no longer available Van der Hull Video 75 ohm cable and over Grim Audio SQM cables to the amp. A normal CAT6 network cable connects the Munich to the SOTM SNH10 switch. The Rune server runs on the Grim Audio Mu1. Only the Intel NUC part of the Grim Audio is in use, so it's factually the same as running Rune on an Intel NUC i3 computer. The iPad Pro again is used as a Rune remote control. Of course the amplification and speakers are from a different class, but I don't have the space to place a Ford reference setup. The MyTech Brooklyn is more realistic, even with the Ferrum power supply. And I must say that the Munich with Forrester does perform rather well. Not to the level of the SOTM SMS200 Ultra Neo, but surely above the standard SMS200. See the link to the reviews of those two. So I rate the Munich and Forrester combination in between setup 2 and setup 1 when used as a digital source. The Munich has surprised me. It is based on the Raspberry Pi but has a lot more electronics on board than the average headboard. That evidently leads to a rather good sound quality when used with the supplied power supply. That sound quality can be further upgraded with the Forrester power supply with the supplied DC cable and then further tweaking can be done by selecting one of the Bastai DC cables and the bun switch. So you can save up for high quality in faces. It of course leaves you with two or three boxes, although being small, and cabling. My guess is that there will be many that like this approach. And for the real hobbyist, I don't think you can change the OS into another OS without running into all kinds of problems, like inserting another SD card and finding correct drivers. And that brings us to the end of this video. As usually there will be a new video next Friday at 5 pm Central European time. If you don't want to miss that, subscribe to this channel or follow me on the social media so you will be informed when new videos are out. Help me reach even more people by giving this video a thumb up or link to this video on the social media. It is much appreciated. Many thanks to those viewers that support this channel financially. It keeps me independent and lets me improve the channel further. If that makes you feel like supporting my work too, the links are in the comments below this video on YouTube. I'm Hans Beekhuizen, thank you for watching and see you in the next show or on the HPproduct.com. And whatever you do, enjoy the music.